Hello, this is Jeff Jensen with Go Engineers PDM Tech Support. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate creating, modifying, and revision managing um, named BOMs in SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM. Uh, the named BOMs is a great way to save a configuration or specific layout for uh, for SOLIDWORKS drawings and assemblies. Um, so they're pretty handy to record a snapshot shot of that uh, of those files, and so these will actually be created from uh, either an enterprise enterprise uh, computed BOM. They can also be created from a SolidWorks uh, BOM, um, and so to create those is is pretty easy. You can uh, just select your assembly, and this will will use this uh, food processor from the SolidWorks tutorials. We'll generate this based off of the computed BOM here. Uh, we'll use the top level only. And so this will, what our named BOM will initially look like since it's based off this uh, assembly and this version of the assembly. So we basically create that by hitting save as. It will give it a name and then it's going to save it uh, in a location in a vault. Um, so this is this is a standalone document that will be key to remember and it's also version just like other SOLIDWORKS files. Uh, so if you actually wanted to see the file in the vault uh, there's this icon to switch the views to be able to uh, see the file listing and the BL materials. So with that switched over we'd be able to see our our named BOM that we just created here. We see it's checked out uh, by me. I'm logged in as the admin right now. Um, you can also switch back and forth from your display drop down menu to show files or bounce back to the uh, bill of materials. Um, and uh, you'll see that uh, these actually, you can edit these down. So What's nice about the named BOMs is you can actually edit the values, unlike the computed BOM or SOLIDWORKS BOM. Uh, you can uh, add uh, rows um, and columns, um, and and you can do a lot of things to kind of tweak it uh, and modify it. Uh, so to get started, we'll just uh, go ahead. We'll check this in uh, just to create like an initial version. So it's checked in now. So if we were to like modify this or change it, uh, we'd have to check it out to get right access to it. So we'll go ahead and check it out. Um, and now we can kind of customize this. So, you know, we can hide rows or hide columns. Uh, and you can also reorder those. Uh, we'll move the quantity up. Also, what's nice about this, uh, we'll go ahead and hide these here. And what's nice, we can also generate a position numbers. Since the computed bombs don't have item numbers, um, we can use, uh, we can create them in a name to BOM. Uh, so we'll go ahead and create, we'll save our changes here. And we'll start with one, and we'll just increment these by one, say OK. And then it go ahead, uh, go ahead. It goes ahead and creates these position numbers, which are same as uh, BOMs. You can right-click on this. Uh, if you update column, you can uh, actually change the name. So if you wanted to, you could call this item number. Um, you won't be able to um, change the uh, variable for the column if it if this column is in the source file that it's generated from you won't be able to change it um, but you can also uh, you can insert you know columns you can do it as free text if you just want to type in any category or you could select uh, variables um, from your you know that you've created in the in enterprise PDM um, so that's basically it. So we'll go ahead and check this back in now that we modified it to kind of display the information we want want it to. Um, we could actually also insert uh, custom items in here basically. So if we insert a row below, uh, you could give it, you know, this could be like glue. So you might say one ounce of glue and type in glue. And so you can type in any value you want there. Um, so we'll add our own little item there. And so we can just check this back in, and we'll save our changes. And then we'll see it creates a new version 
Uh, so you can jump back and forth between these versions and uh, investigate the different states uh, the, that you create these. Um, so what we'll demonstrate now is how to update these basically uh, when we change the food processor assembly. We'll uh, recheck this out and then update it based on a new version of that. So for that we'll just switch over to uh, the food processor to the file views. We'll go ahead and open this up. Uh, we're going to check this out. We'll check out the gear caddy as well. We'll modify that and we'll, we'll basically add a part and delete one and modify one to kind of demonstrate those changes. Let's open it up. Let's actually just change its material. We'll do rot copper. So we'll close and save that. And let's say we're going to get rid of the the base plate here. We'll just delete that from here. We'll also insert a new part. Now this will just be a blank part. We won't actually go through the trouble of modeling any geometry. It's not necessary to show that change. So once we do get it in here, we'll exit editing it. We'll save that externally to check it in. Say OK. And then we just got to save our assembly. And we'll go ahead and check it in. So now we'll jump back over to our vault view. Uh, refresh this here real fast. We'll see we have a new version of, of the assembly. And so now we want to, we can select our named BOM from the BOM drop-down list. We'll see this uh, warning symbol saying that there's a newer version. So we'll actually check this out. And we're going to update it based on this new version of the assembly file. We'll say OK. You'll notice that it brings back in these columns since it's updating it based on that BOM. So we'd have to rehide these if we wanted to. Um, you'll notice that it inserted a new part here. Uh, so you could go in and redo the numbers. We don't want to change the existing ones, but we'll repopulate this new part here. We still have our glue. Uh, so now that's updated, we can go ahead and check it back in. Save our changes. And then what's nice is we can actually compare the differences between version uh, 3 and version 2. So if we switch over to version 3 and select the compare icon, it will actually show that we uh, inserted the new part and then we actually, uh, also deleted the base plate part. Um, it's not showing that we modified the gear caddy because it's only going to show that if we actually had a column with that, with that, um, with that, like if we had a column for material, and let's get out of compare. So it actually only show the change if it, the change is showing up here. So if you were showing like versions and that change, that would show it was modified. If you had a material column and you updated that, that would show it's modified. And you can also save these out as uh, CVS files. And you can even open it as a C CSV file in uh, Excel. Also, what's nice about these is since they are standalone documents, you'll see that they uh, can go through workflows as you check those in and out. You can also see the history on it. Um, so they come in handy when you want to document your different configurations and layouts. Of, a, of an assembly or drawing. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and thanks for watching. Again, this is Jeff Jensen with Go Engineers PDM Tech Support.